Welcome everyone to the second of uh, two webinars, a webinar series run by Sinai and Synapses and the AAAS Dialogue on Science, Ethics and Religion and CLAL, the National Jewish Center for Learning and Leadership about using science as a Jewish professional. My name is Rabbi Jeff Middleman and I'm the founding director of Sinai and Synapses. And with me here today is Judith Donath, somebody I've had the great pleasure of learning from and with about the interface of human te humans and technology. Uh, and we'll be talking this afternoon about costly truths and valuable deceptions, how communication evolves in a rapidly changing world. Um, before I officially introduce Judith here, I wanna give a few words of thank you and I wanna turn it over to our partner, the AAAS here, but we have to thank the AAAS and Klal and the John Templeton Foundation for funding this wonderful series of webinars and this whole initiative about science education for Jewish professionals. So Judith Donath synthesizes knowledge from urban design, evolutionary biology, and cognitive science to design innovative interfaces for online communities and virtual identities. She's the author of The Social Machine, Designs for Living Online, MIT Press, and is known for her writing on identity, interface design, and social communication. Formerly director of the MIT Media Lab's Sociable Media Group, she's the creator of many pioneering online social applications. And currently she's an advisor at Harvard's Berkman Klein Center and is working on a book about technology, trust, and deception. She has received her doctoral and master's degrees in media arts and sciences from MIT and her bachelor's degree in history from Yale University. This presentation will focus on the importance of these topics in human flourishing, which is what the focus is of this series of webinars. So, Dr. Donas, I'm going to turn it over to you, and we're excited to learn from you. All right. Well, thank you very much. And um, so we'll see at the end whether you think it's about enhancing human flourishing or diminishing it. Got it? Okay. Let's start with this. This is a fairly old technology. This is a the type of hand uh, written date book that was very common until recently. And one of the things I just wanna note here is, so towards the bottom uh, where it says birthday party. This is from, I think the ninth sometime in the eighties. But I remember year after year getting a new calendar and writing in all the new birthdays every year. It took a lot of effort. And, but one of the things it rewarded was if somebody said happy birthday to you, you knew that they had actually made a fair amount of effort to remember your birthday. Several years ago, when I was still teaching at the Media Lab, some of my student, one of my students made a project where it was a little bit like Twitter in that you would sort of make these different entries and people would follow you. But instead of using text, it used graphics. And you could make a graphic about anything and, and share it with people. And you'd follow different people. And what I want to point out here is this one in the upper left that says birthday. It was one of the girls who um, was using this technology. And what this label is, is how people found out about my birthday. This is in 2008. And two people found, found out about her birthday through her, a couple from another friend, two from her calendar, two actually remembered, and the rest all got it from Facebook. So this was a fairly big change in how people remembered something like birthdays. It doesn't um, necessarily sound like a big deal, but it's an example of the ways that a technology can have much bigger repercussions in terms of how we communicate than one would de um, necessarily recognize. So today, it's one of the things that, for those of us who are on Facebook at least, which is now you know, a fairly large percentage of the world's population, you get a reminder every day of all your friends whose birthdays it is. There's a likelihood that you've had the experience of having, you know, tons of people send you a happy birthday greeting. Um, and one of the things that this has done is it has certainly made it more efficient to remember things like birthdays, but at the same time, it's kind of removed a lot of the meaning from it. Because back in the day when you had to remember the birthday, you, um, it was a signal that you had cared enough to find out someone's birthday, 
to remember it and to get in touch with them. Today, there's, for instance, there's programs that people sign up for that says, send all my friends happy birthday greetings on their birthday. You certainly never miss a birthday again, but in the end, the actual meaning has been eroded. So as an example, that's also one of the ways that it's very easy if I asked you, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Given the way I just told that story about the technology, it's quite easy to say, well, this is just another example of technology ruining things. You know, all these, these birthday greetings, they're meaningless. You know, um, technology has made this sort of thing empty. And that certainly is one way of looking at it. On the other hand, if you look at the ways people actually use this, yes, some use it automatically. On the other hand, many, many people say that they are in touch with hundreds of people they would have otherwise lost touch, of, touch with because of technologies such as Facebook. And one of the functions of something like these, um, one of the things that it does is it provides a catalyst for people to talk to each other. If I haven't been in touch with someone all year or for several years, and then they've written happy birthday to me, it would be hard for me to, out of the blue, start a conversation. But I might think, oh, you know, I should get in touch with them. It gives me that excuse to do it. So even as a social intervention, it has changed how the ritual of the birthday functions. It has changed the meaning of remembering um, it has made it easier to be in touch while making remembering less important. So we can look at the technology as a change, but it is not necessarily for the better or for the worse. And you can tell that story either way, but the reality lies in a somewhat more complicated middle.